Well, I'm all set up with uh, the clamps holding the frame to the table and that's that's nice and secure. And I want to show you that you can choose any blue for the laden couch work, which is the lattice work behind. So for this one, I've chosen a very dark blue and then couched it with a green in a double thread. So you can see that that's actually a rather gorgeous combination. My plan for this is to work three sections in laden couch work. So the top third is in the deepest colour and then it goes slightly paler. And I just wanted to get a bit of drama into it rather than this other one, which I'll just take that off. I ask you to stay on this one, Richard, for a minute. And this one that we've been showing you a lot, this has a very uh, simple pale blue colour and it's couched with the yellow. So very, um, you know, indicative of a nice sunny day, which it really isn't. It's snowy. Um, so I don't really know what to do with this one. I, I want them all to be slightly different. Uh, perhaps I'll go much brighter with the blue. So I've been looking at my choices. Um, sorry about this. this is the noise of the dog scratching. It's a bit dog. And um, what you need to do now is... It's it... actually her tail smacking against the cupboard. She loves being in here with <laughs> us doing this filming, doesn't she? Right, so what I want to do is do some laden couch work over this area here. And um, this is what we've done here. So we're just going down to about halfway down here. So, um, sorry to move so quickly, Richard. So I'm just going to put something in here to just remind me. I'm just going to about there. Otherwise I just get very carried away. So to actually measure the length of the, of the wool, normally you measure from the end of your finger to your elbow, which is your cubit, and that's your natural stitching length. But because we're actually going to go over this whole area, backwards and forwards with great big long straight satin stitches, you need a lot more. So um, if you think that that's sort of um, about five inches there, then you, you know, if you have any, even if you have 20 inches, that's only four times up and down. So I'm going to take quite a lot of wool, which is <gasps> something I never do. And um, again, I've lost my scissors. I'm always losing my scissors. And I'm just going to test which way this wool's going. It's actually smoother that way. So as usual with Appleton's, you put a little knot in the end that you pull from the skein. So I've pulled the wool, not this little outside, not the outside bit, which sort of says pull me, but the inside of the skein, which usually if you give it a shake, is about the length of a mouse's tail. Then every time I cut it, I leave that length behind. So there's my tail end. This is going to be quite a long stitch and thread it with just looping your thread over the needle, squeeze those together, pull your needle out and squash your needle down over the top. And I've showed this on so many videos, but it's a great thing. You're not actually uh, taking your needle and putting your thread through, you're holding holding your thread and pushing your needle down over it. I'll just show you that again. So take the wool, fold it over your needle, squeeze hard. Now don't open your finger and thumb, just keep it squeezed. Take your needle and take the flat head of the needle and squash it down like that. And it's kind of magic. So, right, now I'm going to Go up and down over the shapes I've drawn on and it doesn't matter which direction you start with. 